um, uh, your first office mate was? Yeah, Dan? Well, my own uh, first and only. Well, no, that's not true. He was my first office mate, uh, Dan Ort. I was um, came here in the fall of '85, and um, or fall of '86. I am Sheila Hickey Garvey, and I teach at Southern Connecticut State University, and I'm a professor of theater. And I've been here since 1988, which is pretty much the time that I met Dan. He retired partly because of health reasons, and uh, I think, uh, frankly, had there not been health concerns, I think he probably would have continued teaching longer. Uh, oh, I know. We were team teaching this course, and I taught it with him once, and then maybe it was a few years, four or five, I don't know if it's four or five years, but it was a few years in between the time we taught the course together once, and then the second time, and I said to Dan, um, hey, I was joking about his age. I thought, that's what I thought I was doing. I was like, hey, you're not as peppy as you used to be, or whatever, because I looked over at him, and he just turned really ashy and he kind of got very still and I thought well it was maybe the time of the day or his blood sugar went down or something I don't know and uh, he got that upset him that I, I said that and then it turned out you know we went back to his office and talked and he said I've got Parkinson's and he said it's getting worse but he um, said he'd have days and he'd describe his day to me I'd say you know how are you doing you know and he'd say well I couldn't brush my teeth this morning and I'd say oh I said what do you well, what, what, what do you, can you do about that? He said, well, I found that if I hold the toothbrush in front of my mouth like this, and I go like this, he said, I can get my teeth brushed. You know, so, <laughs> so he would say funny things like that to, he was always trying to figure out how to m work around his illness, you know. There was a, a pathos there, too. I mean, he was deep and funny at the same time, you know. So he wanted to keep going as long as he could, and then when he decided to retire, that was huge was huge because I think I can't remember now but I think he was about 60 which is young for us to retire you know he, he would still be here he loved it you know. I think it was a little difficult but um, not difficult in the sense that he couldn't have a lot of other things to do he had more stuff to do in a day than than most of us have in a week you know he just is always on the on the prowl for learning about things and so he continued to do that when he retired and like I say he he had discovered painting right a couple of years before he uh, uh, um, retired painting watercolors that he wanted to do and he just he churned them out um, endlessly. This is a watercolor of Dan's um, and it's called September 11th. Um, he didn't necessarily set out to paint something that was related to 9-11 um, and the destruction of the World Trade Center. Um, but this was done sometime within a year or two of that event. And um, as he was, at least this is what he, he told me after, as I was painting it, it sort of, the, the kind of, uh, the, the, the buildings on the side and the, the sort of chaos in the middle and the sort of, uh, the, the kind of grid-like structures um, uh, reminded him of, of the destruction of September 11th. So, he uh, he called it that, and and I was really uh, taken by it. Um, so I think, you know, his life wasn't lacking for uh, uh, creative endeavor and, and continual learning. But I do think he probably missed being in the classroom and being around colleagues. It it wasn't as hard as I I, I thought it was because he kept still very active with the painting and the music and the friends and. Uh, he was even, you know, he even went, there was a, uh, a, a senior center that he would go to uh, and uh, he actually even continued to teach after he retired, but in the senior center in Cheshire. Uh, so, you know, he was, he was still, still teaching. And then, of course, he was always, you know, there was the, the weekly poker games. There was the famous poker game. I don't know if anyone told you about the poker games. Uh, dish. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was, a, he was a very serious poker player. And there were a number of faculty that, you know, we would, we would get together and play. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't really one of the regulars, but there were a few times I played. And, and, uh, how, how much money did... Uh did he win from you? <laughs> I know he won money because I wasn't very good at <laughs> poker. He, he was, uh, 
he was uh, he was an incredible bluffer. The trees that are out there now, a lot of these trees on the campus, are are due to Dan because. They, we had a terrible tornado here in 1989, and it came th across the campus. It hit every building, but even when you walk out of the Lyman Center, there are these beautiful 100-year-old trees lining that whole area. There's only one out there. When you go out and see it, there's only one out there. So we lost so many trees. So he was donating any money that he earned from his books to, to, to plant the trees on the campus, you see. So when you go out there and sit under a tree, very often, Either it was part of his donating the trees or getting other people to be tree conscious and put the trees back on the campus. A few years ago, the trees really started to take on. And um, I was walking, there were a lot of mockingbirds on the campus. And I first noticed one right outside the building in the spring. And it was after me, it was, pay, it was, really, it was really singing to me and wanted me to pay attention to it. And I realized it was Dan. I know that sounds silly, but I thought, that's Dan. And it's a mockingbird on top of it. You have to realize mockingbird is important. But it was singing all these different songs. You know, they imitate. So this, this bird had such a range, but it was, really wanted my attention. And I was, I was watching it, and my first thought was of Dan, that that's Dan up there in one of the trees that he, um, you know, he fostered, shall we say. You know, so I think he's spirit, his spirit is very much with us. It was very thrilling. I went to some event over there in the uh, Engelman recently, and it had the Dan Ort uh, uh, library there, which is totally appropriate, absolutely appropriate.